Your thyroid is the single most important gland in your body because it plays a role in regulating and controlling all other hormones and systems. It also just so happens to be incredibly sensitive to common things like nutritional deficiencies, stress, and even chemical exposure. Which is why thyroid problems are becoming increasingly common, especially among women. But you probably already know this, and I probably don't need to tell you that thyroid problems can cause issues like weight gain, fatigue, cold intolerance, and depression. While these symptoms are important, they are really just the tip of the iceberg. Because just about every single cell in your body has a thyroid hormone receptor, thyroid problems can cause symptoms in just about every single tissue that you can think of. And what's really strange is that not everyone with a thyroid problem presents with the exact same set of symptoms. Yes, there will always be some overlap in symptoms like fatigue and weight gain, which most thyroid patients do experience, but there are plenty of other thyroid-related symptoms that you may miss if you don't know what to look for, which is exactly why we're gonna be talking about both surprising and less well-known symptoms of hypothyroidism starting right now. And number one on that list is high cholesterol. This is one of those symptoms that is both common and very surprising, mostly because it's not on the radar of doctors, but it is definitely the case that your thyroid has an impact on your cholesterol level. This is for two reasons. The first is that it reduces the activity of an enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase, which is the same enzyme that the medication statins target and is the rate-limiting step for the synthesis or production of cholesterol. Generally, if you reduce the activity of this enzyme, you'd expect your cholesterol levels to fall. But that's not what we see in hypothyroidism, so what gives? Well, in addition to impacting this enzyme, the low thyroid state downregulates LDL receptor activity which means it slows down the clearance of LDL and HDL. By reducing the clearance of these lipids, it allows them to build up in your system where you will eventually be flagged as having high cholesterol. And just so we are clear, this is a big problem because along with this elevation in cholesterol, thyroid patients also see an increased risk of heart attacks and cardiovascular disease. The good news is that if you can treat your thyroid adequately, you can completely normalize your cholesterol. That is, of course, assuming that your high cholesterol is not related to a poor lifestyle or some other cause. This also means if you have high cholesterol from some unknown cause, then it may be a good idea to look into your thyroid as a potential cause. And if you are a thyroid patient listening to this who already has a high cholesterol level, then this may be an indication that your thyroid function is not as optimized as it should be, in which case you may need to adjust your thyroid medication to compensate. Number two on the list, we have menstrual problems. In a study of over 50 hypothyroid women, only 22% had a normal menstrual cycle. This means that to some degree, thyroid dysfunction impacts the menstrual cycle of 80% of women who have thyroid problems. And this impact can range from having problems like heavy bleeding, to having very long menstrual cycles, or to the complete absence of the menstrual cycle. Why does this happen? Well, we don't know for sure, but what we do know is that thyroid hormone impacts sex hormones like progesterone and estrogen, as well as gonadotropins like FSH and each of these hormones impacts the menstrual cycle in some way. When thyroid hormone is low, it causes a decrease in FSH, which in turn then lowers your estrogen and progesterone. And because both estrogen and progesterone must be balanced for the menstrual cycle to occur normally, a relative drop in either of these hormones will impact the cycle. This imbalance of estrogen to progesterone also results directly in other symptoms like weight gain, menstrual irregularities, bloating, and infertility, which are related to the sex hormones and not to the thyroid. So these downstream symptoms stack on top of the thyroid problems that already existed. The good news is that if these problems exist, they do resolve quickly as long as you treat your thyroid. The bad news is that women who tend to have these menstrual problems do need tighter control over their thyroid hormone lab tests like the TSH. Number three, we have swelling in the legs and in the face. When thyroid hormone levels are low, it causes a buildup of polysaccharides in the skin in the form of hyaluronic acid and glycosaminoglycans. And it just so happens that these compounds happen to attract and store a lot of water. Hyaluronic acid, for instance, 
can hold up to 1,000 times its weight in water, which is why this compound is often used as a facial moisturizer. This is great if you want to moisturize your skin, but not so great if your body starts to accumulate these compounds where they shouldn't be. If these polysaccharides end up in tissues where they don't belong, they will pull in water causing a swelling of the tissue of wherever they have accumulated. In hypothyroidism, this accumulation of polysaccharides can happen in just about any tissue. When it happens in your legs, you end up with peripheral edema, but it can also happen in your face around your eyes where it can cause periorbital edema. Because this problem isn't related to your total body water, changing how much you drink will not have any effect. If you want to fix this problem, you must fix your thyroid. Number four would be headaches and migraines. The connection between hypothyroidism and headaches is completely different from all the other symptoms we've discussed so far. For all of the symptoms we've discussed so far, hypothyroidism was the direct cause of that symptom. But headaches are much different. Research suggests that the presence of headaches may be an early predictor of thyroid problems. So instead of being a symptom of its presence, it's more like a canary in the coal mine. We know this because researchers have looked at people with new onset headaches and compared their incidence of hypothyroidism to that of healthy controls and found that people with new onset headaches have a 20% increased risk of developing hypothyroidism that is higher than the healthy person. So what this means for you is that if you suddenly start to develop headaches or migraines, there is a chance that the presence of these headaches may be an early sign that your body is about to develop a thyroid problem. It's probably not the case that these headaches are a magical warning sign, but instead just a really early symptom of thyroid disease. We don't know exactly why it happens, but one thought is that it may be related to the impact that thyroid hormone has on the muscles and the nerves in your head and neck. Low thyroid function can cause trigger points in the muscles that are around your head and neck, which can then clamp down on the blood vessels and nerves in that area, resulting in tension headaches. Number five are mood swings. Thyroid hormone is responsible for revving up the metabolism of every cell in the body. In states where thyroid hormone is low, energy production will suffer. This applies to all tissues, including the brain. Decreased energy production in the brain may contribute to symptoms like sadness, depression, irritability, and mood swings that are so common among thyroid patients. This is also probably why thyroid patients end up with problems like brain fog, slowed thought, and slowed speech as well. If you notice that your moods are swinging wildly one way or the other, or if you just don't feel like yourself again, then it may be time to get your thyroid checked. Number six is dry skin. Your skin is the biggest organ in your body and by virtue of its size, the site of a lot of thyroid hormone activity. And a very common symptom associated with low thyroid function is dry skin. This symptom stems from the impact that thyroid hormone has on the sweat glands or eccrine glands found throughout your body. Your sweat glands function primarily to regulate your body temperature, but they also have an impact on lubricating the skin. And because a sluggish thyroid hormone decreases sweat gland activity, thyroid patients often end up with dry, itchy, scaly skin. This is also why thyroid patients have to be careful about their exposure to certain chemicals. Their inability to sweat appropriately means that they have one less way to eliminate these compounds, which allows them to build up in their bodies over time and cause problems. Number seven are muscle aches and pains. Having a thyroid problem makes you more prone to developing muscle aches and pains as well as chronic pain syndromes. For instance, it's been shown that the prevalence of fibromyalgia among healthy people is around two to 7% and as high as about 30 to 40% among patients who already have thyroid disease like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is most likely related to the muscle issues that I discussed previously when we were talking about headaches. When thyroid hormone is low, your muscles are unable to produce enough ATP, which means they are unable to relax. This lack of relaxation results in trigger points and tender points, which then contribute to chronic pain. And you can identify these trigger points by poking around on certain areas and muscles on your body. Number eight are changes to your voice. Your voice box is sensitive to many hormones, including your thyroid. Do you remember when I mentioned that thyroid problems can cause a buildup of polysaccharides in the tissues, 
which can then drag water along with it? Well, when it happens in your legs, it causes peripheral edema. But as I mentioned there, it can happen anywhere, including in your vocal cords. And when it happens in your vocal cords, you end up with symptoms like hoarseness and a loss of voice range. This particular problem is not as common as the more subtle changes that thyroid problems cause to the voice, including changes to voice roughness, breathiness, and strain. But you're not likely to notice these more subtle changes, even though they do happen to most thyroid patients, unless you are a trained professional. Number nine, we have carpal tunnel syndrome. Polysaccharide deposition not only affects your voice, it can also affect your nerves. When these compounds deposit themselves in the tissues around your wrist, you may end up with wrist swelling and the condition of carpal tunnel syndrome. On top of this, hypothyroidism also leads to weight gain due to its impact on metabolism, which is yet another risk factor for developing carpal tunnel syndrome as well. So people with thyroid problems have at least two reasons to develop this particular nerve problem. If you have any of these symptoms, then it would be a very good idea to get your thyroid checked. But you should know that standard thyroid lab tests are not as accurate as you might think. So if you want to accurately assess your thyroid, make sure that you watch this video next.